So back again, uh, we stopped here with um, class A here. We were talking about uh, how to do graphs, and we're talking talking about linear functions. And this would be the uh, second lecture for chapter one, uh, the appendix, the math review. And so we're talking about uh, graphing here, and we talked about the equation of a line, which again is y equal to mx plus b. And then we took this data here for class A, and we took the starting point right here. So zero days, we have 10 points. That number is 10 there, kind of marked over it. And then we have one day you come to class, you will get 15 points, which is an increase of 5. You come a second day, you also get 5 more points. And I just noticed I graphed this wrong. So there we have 5 more, 5 to 15, to 20, and then to 25. And so my line is off a bit, that's okay. Just notice that. So the previous lecture, I made a mistake by going to point 30. So that has now been corrected. And now we can actually get the equation of this line. Uh, the b is where it starts from, that's y-intercept. And that's the value of the y variable points when the x variable over here is 0. And so that is the starting point for class A. If they don't come to class at all, they'll get 10 points simply by guessing or reading the book or things like that. And so the b is going to be 10. And then now the slope is the increase in y when we add one more unit of x. So if we have one day right here, 0 to 1, it goes up by 5 points. And if we add a second day, it goes up by five points, and a third day goes up by five points. So every time we add one more uh, class meeting, you get five more points. That is the slope is now going to be five. And so where our equation is y is equal to five x plus ten. It's a positive relationship because every time you come to class, you will get more points. We could also get the slope by looking at the graph. Uh, let's go from say these two points here. You may have remember in a math class that to find the slope of a line you need just two points. That's because it's consistent. The way that x affects y never changes. So these two points right here, we increase the number of days from 1 to 2. So remember the slope is the change in the y variable over the change in the x variable. And so this is the x variable. It went up by one day. And the y variable goes up from 15 to 20. And that's an increase of 5. So like we found up here, by looking at the table, we know the slope is going to be 5 as well by looking at the graph. And that pretty much is what we need in this class to, um, in terms of uh, doing actual calculations with, with equations. Let's go down here, another class, class B. Uh, this class might be a different class that I teach. And say that if no one comes to class, they get 10 points again. So that's the same as, as, as up there. But now let's say every time they come to class from 0 to 1, they get not 5 more points, but 10 more points. So we can also plot this on this graph here. What I did is I just uh, plotted uh, class A again. And this one I actually did correctly. That's 25 right there. And so class B starts at the same point right here, because it has the same y-intercept. But now on the first day, instead of 15, they're not going to be at 20. And so 20 is going to be up here. A little bit higher. And then on the second day, if they come to class second day, they will get now 30 points instead of um, 20 down here. And so now instead of being at 20, we're going to be all the way up to 30. And that's about right there. And I'm just uh, dotting these things in as reference lines for me to help, help graph it. And then the last one, uh, th uh, the third day, you will have now 40 points instead of 25. And that'll be way up here. And so I get my ruler out again. Get it straight here. And let me just kind of graph in the line here. And this is class B. So class B has a higher slope. That's why it is rising faster. 
And so the y-intercept is the same, so you go back to the equation, y equal to mx plus b. b is still going to be 10. But now every time we come to class, we get 10 more points, not 5. And so the slope is going to be 10 and not 5. So a higher slope means it's going to be steeper, and the higher slope means that, let me erase this here. So again, this is the y-intercept 10, and this is the uh, slope 10. And so a higher slope, a higher m, means that x affects y in a greater way. So on the first class, class A, every time you come to class, you get five more points. In this class, coming to class is more effective. So x is having a bigger impact on y. Coming to class is having a bigger impact on the points. So instead of getting five more points for every day of attendance, you get 10 more points. And so understand that a steeper slope means that the x variable is having a larger impact on the y variable. And that is about as hard as it gets in terms of equations. Let's do a few more. Here I sketched in class A and B, which we've already talked about, and now we have class C. And class C is kind of strange. It has 10 again as a starting point. But now if you come to class one time, you still get 10 points. You come to class two times, you still get 10 points. Three times, you still get 10 points. So if I get my ruler out, it is a flat line. Looks like I sort of drew it so it was downward sloping a little bit, but that's just a mistake. It should be just straight across flat. I'll kind of make it larger. <laughs> there you go, and that's class C. Uh, does class C have a slope? No, it does not. Uh, every time you come to class, you get no more points. So the increase in uh, the y variable is zero. And you can see that there's no increase going up or down, and it's flat. So the slope here is zero. Does this line have an equation? Yes, it does. y is equal just to 10. We could write it in this way. y is equal to mx plus uh, 10. But since the slope is 0, 0 times anything is 0, it just comes out to 10. If it's a flat line like that, it tells us that the x variable has no impact on the y variable at all. Down here is class D, and this one's even worse. Uh, starts out at 10 again, but now when you come to class one time, you have less points, eight. That's about there. And then you come to class two times, you get even less points, six. And that's about there. And you come to class three times, you get even less points. Uh, this is not good. This means come to class is actually damaging people's brains, destroying knowledge. And if you plot this line, more or less, you get a downward sloping line. And this is for class D. This means stay away from this instructor, because every time you come to class, you are losing knowledge. Your brain is somewhat being damaged or destroyed. Uh, and this also has an equation. Here, the y-intercept, again, is going to be 10. But now, every time you come to class, you get two less points. So instead of being a positive slope, now it's going to be negative slope. And because you lose two points every time you come to class, y is equal to negative 2 times x plus, again, 10. So if you come to class five times, you will get no points on the test. OK. Now we are going to have some nonlinear graphs to look at. Before we get to that, we want to talk about moving along a curve uh, as opposed to a shift in a line or curve. There are two kinds of changes. So if you look back at, say, the first one we looked at, or maybe the second one, because that one's a little nice and neater. When we move along, say, class B, we're only changing two kinds of variables. We're allowing the days to change, and we're allowing the points to change. All the variables that can affect your points on the test are not changing. They're going to be held constant. And so moving along the line, we are simply changing those two variables. And those are only the things that are changing. 
So we go from this point to that point, all that's changed is that we went to class one more time from one to two, and we got more points. We, uh, we went up from 20 to 30. Now, the, we're, in this case, we're going to be assuming that all the other variables that can affect your points on the test, you know, how, if you read the book or not, um, if you uh, looked at some other videos, uh, you, went to some, you went to tutoring, things like that, you posted questions online to get help from the instructor, all those things can also affect your points. When we look at class B and this line here, we're assuming all the other things you can do that can affect your grade are going to be held constant. Now there's a term to know for the exams, and that term is right here. It is a Latin term. It looks like it's suteris paribus, but it's actually pronounced cateris paribus. And that is a Latin term that means all else equal. What that means in English is that other relevant variables are constant. When that's the case, we're moving along the same line of curve because we're only changing the variables that are on the graph. Now that's not the only change there can be. There are a lot of other things that can affect your points on the test, like I mentioned. And those would be a non suteris paribus condition. If it's non suteris paribus, that means other relevant variables are changing. And this will give us a shift in the line or curve. It's going to move the line or curve. So if we go back, let's draw here. So here if we have say points on a test, and this number of days you come to class, and say it looked like this. I'll leave out the equation, just draw a line. Then if you say go to get a tutor, or maybe you read the book, or you look at more videos online, you might get more points on, on, on each possible amount of attendance. So say this is, uh, say, two days, so you might have gotten maybe 20 points, just make up a number. Now, two days, by going to a tutor, you might get, say, 40 points. So at every day, you might get 20 more points. That means it's going to look something like that, maybe a change in the line or curve. And so this would be the first one, and this would be the second one. That kind of change, we have non Cateris paribus. It means other variables are changing. Again, the increase here could be due to the fact you went to the tutor, you asked a lot of questions online, you looked at other videos, you read the book. Other factors can also affect your points. So in this class, we're going to have changes along the line or curve, which means other variables are not changing. And then when other variables do change, the way we model that is by actually changing the line or curve. And actually, it's now about 13 minutes for the lecture. I guess I should stop here, give you guys a break. And I have to have one more lecture then, I guess, for the math review.